What is up guys, GZ here, and the last time I played Battery Man was, I guess around YCS Toronto 2014. Um, I played it in a side event there, because I was doing feature matches, and then I played it at one regional afterwards and did alright. I think I went X3, it's not like fantastic, but I did pretty good. Um, and right now I think that you can basically play Battery Man in one of three ways. I think you can play it super aggressive, like I'm doing here. Um, I think you can also play it with artifacts. But I figured you guys are kind of sick of seeing me put artifacts and things, so I'm not going to profile that version. And then I also think it might be viable to play it with Monarch support. Um, you could play, like... Like, I used to be playing, like, Stormforth and stuff, so, like, there's already some synergy there. Um, I'm not playing Stormforth in this version, but... You could also play, like, Pantheism and Domain, just, like, accelerate your deck and kind of stun your opponent. But I think the hyper-aggressive one is probably the most viable right now. Um, the set can actually just see some really stupid shit, so anyway, let's get right into it. Uh, so we're playing three Battery Man Charger, because he's, like, the best one in the deck. Um, and, like, especially in this deck, because I'm going to zoom in for a second. So, especially in this version, because, um, in some other versions, he, like, clogs, because, like, if you have multiples, like, it's level 5 monster, and you have to, like, normal summon it. But, uh, we're playing Brilliant Fusion, so... Um, you can actually summon multiple multiples of these in the same turn, and they actually get their effects, which is pretty fucking stupid. Um, so you can do some pretty, pretty weird combos with that. So yeah, it's not once it's not limited to once per turn, so that's really cool. Um, we're also playing three nine volt, um, like nine volts. Not really the best one, but he's he's all right. I really wish he wasn't limited to once per turn. That would be pretty cool, but alas, he is. Um, three fuel cell. That's fine. I don't know. Um, through Microcell, so Microcell isn't nearly as good as when I last played this deck. There's a lot of ways to destroy things before you get to the battle phase. Um, but luckily, um, at least the first time that you resolve, or the first time you set up Microcell, your opponent probably won't know what the hell your, any of your cards do, so like they won't like know to spin the face down. Um, they won't think it's like a threat, so you can usually get that first one, and boy, if Microcell resolves, you are lit. Like, Microcell is like crazy, because you get the draw, and the 9-volt summon, and the 9-volt search, and like, you start your next turn with a tribute monster, uh, tribute fodder with the 9-volt, like, Microcell is just fucking insane. So I guess we're playing 3, um, but you can definitely side these out when you go into games 2 and 3, because like, once they like know what your, like, face-down monster does, like, then they're not just gonna attack into it, so it only works, like, that one time, but it's pretty good that one time it goes off. Um, one industrial strength, like, this guy's effect never goes off, but he is a searchable 2600 beater, um, so that's pretty cool, so we're playing the one of him. Um, yeah, his effect just really isn't gonna happen. It might happen against Pepe, that's probably, like, the only matchup that I would ever really be good at, because then you can, like, pop, like, a Dynaster and, like, a Scale, well, that wouldn't work, because then skill would be destroyed. You can pop, like, something in a scale. Who, who fucking knows? Um, we're also playing Speedroid, so we're playing three Terra Top and uh, just one Take Timberg. So I think this is the best ratio in the long run. Um, I know you can only resolve the one Terra Top, because then you just have two dead ones in deck. But you're really just trying to win the game after resolving one of them. Like, it's not... You're not trying to... This, this deck is not designed for, like, the long haul. Um, so I, I think this is fine... Um, you really just want that, you really just want to make sure you don't draw the Take Timberg. Um, and even if, like, you do draw the other Terra Tops afterwards, like, you can still special summon them. So it's different than, like, Brilliant Fusion, where, like, if you draw the Garnet, like, you literally just have three dead cards in your deck if you're only playing one Garnet. Um, where, like, this, like, you can still special summon the Terra Tops. Anyway, though, these cards are good. Dante's really good in our build, because we're playing the Monster Reborn card. Um, just accelerating your game, game plan. Like, you're just trying to put a lot of damage on board. So those are pretty good. And they're pretty good at playing through back row, because you make break sword. Uh, two Summoner Monk. So, uh... I didn't like Summoner Monk before Brilliant Fusion came out, because you would just get a 9-volt and then, like, make rank 4 and pass. But now that you, like, um... have Brilliant Fusion, you can, like, Summoner Monk for 9-volt, add a Charger, Brilliant Fusion for Seraphonite, and then, like, tribute the Seraphonite for the Charger. You can't tribute the Summoner Monk, because Summoner Monk can't be tributed for any reason, um, but that that's quite a bit of damage on board uh, when you factor in like the Charger Special Summon and like another Ink 4 or whatever. So that's pretty cool. So I like Summoner Monk on this build. It's pretty cool. Um, one Trick Clown. So Trick Clown 
So I don't think it's like serious enough to like play multiples of these just in case you like draw it, but a lot of the times you do want to send this off with the Brilliant Fusion, but it's not like the end of the world if you don't, because like all the battery men are light. It's like you can usually you're just sending like micro cells so you don't draw them, but sometimes sending Trick Clown is better, so we'll play it as a one of. And then two Garnet, uh, kind of like I just explained with the Terror Tops. Um, I think when you play Brilliant Fusion, you have to play two Garnet. I just don't think one Garnet is viable, because then like if you draw it, you actually just have three dead cards in your deck and. Uh, I just, I, like, I tried it at one regional, and, like, I do Garnet way too many times, so I'm just never doing that again. So, we're playing two. Um, we're playing three Battery Charger. Um, Battery Charger is pretty fantastic, actually. So, the problem with this card previously, I, I think it's been, like, one copy in my last build a really long time ago, but the problem was that you couldn't get Battery Man in the graveyard very fast, um, but with Brilliant Fusion at our disposal, we can put them in there really fast, and you can, like, send... A nine volt with brilliant fusion and then revive it with this and then like you get the nine volt search and that's pretty stupid so we're playing that card um three brilliant fusion um like the seraphine level five so you can like overlay with it you can use like two chargers in one turn with your normal summons you can like you can just do a whole bunch of stupid shit with brilliant fusion so that's why we're playing it and that's why i continue to play it in so many different decks it's just such a good card um a lot of decks like can just do so much more when you give them like a second normal summon um, especially this one. So, um, we're playing three instant fusion. So, mainly this is to get out Norden to like, um, go into a rank, a free rank four, um, and push for damage. But you can also play it the way that I used to be playing it, which is just summon like Panzer Dragon to make a, a rank five with your charger because Panzer Dragon's a level five light monster. Um, I hate back rows, so we're playing three Twin Twister and one MST. This deck really can't play through back row. Um, well, it can, but like you won't OTK after it. Like you can, you can like bait out a back row with like Terror Top, and then you can like bait out a back row with Instant Fusion. But then like you don't like OTK afterwards. So like I just don't want to play around back row with this deck. I just want to always be able to just get rid of all of it. Um, so these cards, pretty good at that. So we're playing those. Um, we're also gonna play some board wipes. So two Dark Hole and Regeki. Um, we can't play Stormforth anymore, because, like, that conflicts with the Brilliant Fusions and the Instant Fusions. Um, so I think you have to play these just to get rid of your opponent's board. Um, I don't know, like, I really considered Manian System down, because Cosmos are pretty tough, but I think in the long run, like, just main decking that card is pretty bad, unless, like, you know you're going to play against Cosmos at your locals. But, uh, a more universal card... It's a creature swap. It's not quite as good as System Down against Cosmos, but it's not nearly as terrible against the other matchups. Um, so you can like give them like Take Timbergs in attack position. You can give them like Seraph Knights in attack position. Like you can just like give them stupid shit and like you just OTK through it usually. Um, so I like creature swap. So that's it. Um, there is literally no defense. It is you're just trying to go second with the stack and then just OTK. Um, the entire thing is offensive, um, but it's actually pretty good at that. So. I don't know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so the extra deck, we're playing a Dante and a Breaksword as our rank 3s. Um, Dante to, like, mill shit. Um, and just, it has more attack, and this guy mainly just to play through back row, so that's why we're playing those ones. Um, oh, and th I, I played this over, like, Alucard, because, or the blue quantum thing, because this can pop, like, your Brilliant Fusion. So that's kind of cool. Alucard just isn't really that great anymore. Um, and then our rank 4s are Castell... Uh, Dweller and Diamond Direwolves. So Dweller is by far the most important one um, to attack over Cosmo ships and shit. So, and you can make him with Norden, so he's at twenty two hundred attack points. That's kind of neat. Um, we're playing for the rank fives: one Volcasaurus, one Artifact Durandal, and then one Pleiades. Uh, these are pretty much like the best generic. Well, I guess Pleiades isn't generic, but these are pretty much the best rank fives in the game right now. They all serve a lot of different purposes. Durandal is by far one of my favorite rank fives, if not my favorite rank five in the game, just because like it fixes your bad hands and like fucks with your opponent's shit. So that's pretty cool. It's really good against Cosmos too, because they like banish a little they banish a pilot and then you like Durandal and then if they like draw anything, they like have to special summon it. But a lot of times they don't draw what they need. Anyway, uh, so we're playing for rank sixes, one gauntlet launcher. He's like okay at like pushing through a lot of monsters by overlaying fuel cells, and then, like, one Fortune Strike Bouncer, who is probably just the better of the two. It's, like, you can, like, um, 
if you don't OTK, uh, you actually can sort of set up a defensive board with like Photon Strike Bouncer and Pleiades. Like that's a pretty pretty strong board. Um, it's not like fantastic um, against like Monarchs or whatever, but it's it's still pretty strong regardless. Um, but the Gauntlet Launcher is just like a more aggressive option, so we're gonna play that. Um, and then just one guy Charger. I feel like I, I feel like I have an ulti some ulti somewhere, but I don't know where it is. But anyway, we're playing one guy Charger. Um, guy Charger is pretty cool. He, getting that attack after the Volcasaurus. Um, for the fusions, one Norden, one Panzer Dragon, and then two Seraphonite. Um, you're really not gonna ever. Like, I don't even know if both Seraphonite are necessary, but. You definitely don't really need a second Norden or a second Panzer Dragon because you're only going to resolve like one instant fusion in the game. Um, and I suppose you could cut the one Seraphonite for like, I don't even know. There's there's not like a lot that I would want to play right now. Like you could try to fit in, um, you could cut like the Seraphonite and or one Seraphonite and the Gaunt Launcher for like a Utopia and a Utopia Lightning. But uh, I don't know if it's that serious, so... I think this is like a fine lineup. But anyway, this deck's like a lot of fun. So if you want to play something that's kind of fun, kind of silly, um, pick this deck up. It's surprisingly cheap. I know a lot of times I say that in deck profiles and people like bitch me out because there's cards I don't know are expensive. I, I don't know how fucking much Terror Tops are. But relatively to other decks in this game, Batterman are pretty freaking cheap. Um, all the Batterman cards are super low rarity. Brilliant Fusion has gone down in price. You should already have Twin Twisters and like the board wipes. Um, the extra deck stuff is... I don't know how much Pleiades is. Like these cards... Well, Dante's not very expensive, especially with Gold Series coming out. And I guess you could play like Alucard or the Super Quantum over the Phantom Knight guy if you really wanted to play it like super budget. But anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed the tech profile. It wasn't like the stun variant or anything, but I think... I think this channel needs some hyper-aggressiveness, so that's what we profiled. See you guys later. Bye.